Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review today. We're going to take a look at the Lechegg 21 year. Cast strength at 52.9% ABV. Dustin, as you know, I've never bought a Lechegg. Yeah. This is our uh, gift from our buddy, the Malton Man Cave. Yep. So I think he may have done this. So thank you, Keith. Gave us a bottle of whiskey that we wanted to review, and he was happy enough to leave us a... Uh, Quite a bit of this good one, so I was impressed with it when he came by and we had a few drinks of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think I own one Lechegg, but it's not an official bottle. I've got a Black Adder. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we've had, I've had a, one or two of these Lechegs. You know, sometimes... Um, I think Keith's brought over maybe one before. Yeah, three or four. So it's, it's a distillery I need to get more into, but uh, this 21, um, I was really kind of impressed with a few times Keith and I had it, so he was kind enough to give me the rest of the bottle. Really cool cork, too. It has an island on it, you know, kind yeah. of and everything. So. Looks antiqued. Yeah, yeah, it does. It looks like a, it looks like an, an old book that has like a leather cover, but it's like yeah. you know, it got a, a raised um, surface, you know, to kind of give a, a nice feel and texture to it. Do you remember the price point on this one? I know it's in the uh, good value range. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, I want to say low mid two hundreds. I uh, every time I try to, every time he's giving me a bottle, um, I ask him what it costs, and then I think I re over remember. And every time I say in a review, I'm wrong. Yeah, he's like, gonna come back like, dude, it was three hundred. Yeah, he was like, hey man, short changed me. You yeah, know, all this kind of stuff. So I'm not even gonna guess. It's probably it's three hundred dollars, I'm sure. Yeah, two, but I, four, I, six, I don't know. I do, but I do remember this being like you know when you think of cast strength, official bottling, mm -hmm. with, you know, nice finishing, mm -hmm. and with, we're like one of sixteen hundred bottles here. Yeah, something like 1602? that. Sixteen oh two. Sixteen oh two. Yeah, we, we have bottle nine seventeen of sixteen oh two. Yeah, so I remember thinking to myself, that's a pretty good deal. And I hear a lot of people saying, well, Chegg in general is a really good value brand. Like I heard their 18 is phenomenal for the price. Is it Ledeg or Lechegg? Lechegg, right? It's Lechegg, yeah. That's not how I would ever <laughs> in a million years say it, but... We don't, I, don't, I don't teach English, as you know. No. and Or spelling. Or Gaelic. Uh, or any of that stuff. That, so, so, yeah. We're doing our best. All right, so I'm assuming natural color. Um, light, light caramel. Caramel with water added, I would say. Yeah, light. it's got a nice color. I mean... I assume it's natural color, but I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, that would, I'd, I'm guessing. Again, I've had this a few times, but as far as research, I, I, I got just a little bit with it. Yeah. What are you picking up on the nose, my friend? It's like wood glue, putty, um, a little bit of maybe some sulfur, but not like a sherry sulfur, like a, even it could be like a wormwood type uh, element without the sweetness I usually get with wormwood. Yeah, so the Cheggs, assuming that's how I say it, um, have always come off to me a combination of sour and bomar. And what I mean by that is, um, bomar to me kinds of comes off gluey and plasticky, mm -hmm. at least initially. And I get a little bit of that gluey, plasticky bomar, mm -hmm. you know, with it, along with some sour notes. That's, that's the initial ones, and that doesn't mm -hmm. sound great, but. Yeah, I mean, there's some barn element here, but not like, this, again, nothing sweet's coming off here, really. Everything is a little sour, a little funky. Now, when you say that, I've had this one a few times and it goes the same way every time. It comes off of the way I just described it, mm -hmm. Bowmore plus sourness, and then it does get sweet for me. Yeah, no, I remember last time we had it. It definitely, I mean, at first I was kind of like Ooh. a little shocked by how funky, earthy, just odd it was. And then I remember coming back to it and thinking, man, milk chocolate is all of a sudden in this thing. Yeah, yeah, so it definitely evolves quite a bit. And even though this bottle's gotten worked down, I still, like, it still has to go through the same steps. Yeah. It's like 50 first dates. I gotta tell the student the same thing every single morning. We gotta go through these same steps. Like, no, put on your shoes. No, one's left, one's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It feels like you gotta walk down the same exact way every time with this whiskey. But again, now after just about a minute or so in here, here comes the sugar. Here comes a little bit of pie crust. And here comes a little bit of apple skin. Yeah, I mean, it definitely starts opening up. <clears throat> so along with that Bomar gluey plasticky note and the sour note, on top of that, kind of once you dig through that, mm -hmm. I'm getting lattice apple pie. Interesting, I'm, I'm still not on the nose picking up too much. It's, it's it, the funk has gone away a little bit. It's now a very, mellowed very enjoyable yeah that's a pie crust mm -hmm. yeah and I, I think tasting it kind of also shifted my my balance here because you already tasted it yeah okay what do you think of the balance so it's much sweeter i do get hints of cocoa nibs i get what i want to call like again it's something that reminds me of like the wormwood finish you get on the craig Allakies where it's just kind of a funky sweetness it's really really nice i do get a hint of pie crust it also hits me like a freaking punch, Mike Tyson punched in the face with spice. 
I mean, it wasn't just that, alcohol. There's alcohol in here. I didn't. I don't remember what we said on this one. 52? 52. 52. Yeah, 52 yeah. or something. <clears throat> it hit way harder than 52 nine, and it hit. It, I think it's the spice. I mean, it actually back of my throat even like got a sting. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, it's spicy. And it's tangy. There's almost like a coppery note to it mm -hmm. as well. Almost like, um, yeah, I mean, copper is the best way I can describe it. Almost like you licked a copper bowl or something like that. Like a, a twinge of metallic. It's like the finish, yeah. Like it kind of bites, like, yeah. Twinge of metallic, yeah. Almost like, um, I don't know. Like uh, sometimes, I, I ever have like a, a thunderstorm and like lightning hit close to you and kind of have that ionized mm -hmm. metal taste like, yeah, in yeah. the air and stuff like that? It kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Here's a note I've never given out before. How about this one? You ever lick a nine volt battery as a kid? Yes. Yes, I did. Acid, you see, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's actually what that spice kind of felt like. It, instead of on the front of my tongue where I was a kid, it was the back of my throat. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but it right. was like that metal, metallic, like electric shock almost. Yeah, you took it out of the, the little electronic uh, football game. You're like, oh, let me lick this. Yeah, sadly, <laughs> I've done that. Yeah, yeah, but again, I think we're saying the same thing, that metallic sort of yeah, ionized yeah. air or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So we put a couple drops of water in it. I just smell wood now, Mike. Like, and it's really nice, mellow wood. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of the pie crust, a little vanilla. It's almost like when I open up my um, oak cabinets with my with my Glen Cairns in it. Yeah. At first, we get a little bit of that wood yeah. wood varnish kind of sort of smell. Yeah, it's more like a Home Depot, like you're in the kitchen section. Sawdust. Yeah, sawdust, but like, or like even it's got like some you know lacquer on it. It's more of like a plastic kind of like coating. It's not the high end like you know furniture store notice. No, it's IKEA. Ikea wood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, plastered chipboard. Yeah. Like paste, put, put pieces together. Yeah, and there's, you know, maybe there's a little bit of glue that's coming off on those too, just mm -hmm. like this. Again, there is something in here that just reminds me so much of Bomar's. Yeah, there is. And there's a little bit of a pepper note here. But yeah, it, it's still got the glue and it's got like a little plastic. Yeah, glue, plastic, melted plastic. You know, when I was a small boy, uh, before like video game systems, I remember one Christmas I got a uh, little miniature um, Pac-Man game with mm -hmm. two little joysticks and you know, you can play them if you want to have two players. Mm -hmm. And um, I was playing it by the fireplace one time and I fell asleep and left it too close to the fire and then I woke up in the morning and it was all melted. You know, it was like warped in the back, destroyed it in any way. And that smell from the warped, mm -hmm. still warm plastic, I get a little bit of that in here. So it tastes like a childhood's Christmas present being yeah. destroyed. That's what I'm trying to say. This to me is Bowmore, and I just tasted it with water. It's Bowmore meets Craig Allocky meets Talisker. It's the Talisker spice. It's mm -hmm. the Bowmore plasticky peat earthiness. And it's that Craig Allocky, it's got that the sweetness in this reminds me of the Craig Allocky. Like that, again, I, I associate it with that warm wood. Mind you, I think Talisker uses warm wood as well. So mm -hmm. um, Maybe that's why, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's why I'm kind of getting it, but it's like those three distillates all are kind of coming out here. In this, I mean, in the peat level to me here is Talisker level, mm -hmm. Bowmore level. I mean, it's in yeah, there. Salt, brine, maritime. Yeah, that, that whole that whole package yeah. together. I agree. I agree. But I tell you what, though, up front, initial sweetness on here really is good. Like, mm -hmm. you don't, the nose doesn't tell you anything about the sweetness you're going to get. And again, it's like milk, chocolate, cocoa nibs meets wormwood. Yeah. No, I mean, I, you really nailed it with all of those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Where is Whiskey where Score? Oh, goodness. This is a tough one to score, Mike. This is such a different whiskey than I am used to. All right, then I'll jump off. 87 out of 100. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to... We'll go with you. I'll go 87. Yeah, I, was, I was debating 86. I was debating 88. And I said, well, I can't decide, so 87. I mean, it's got good age. It's mm -hmm. got a good ABV. It's mm -hmm. not that. I don't know if it's something to cast, but just the distillate is always been something with this distillery. I was like, I don't know if it's for me. I, you know, this is definitely not a distillery for me. However... This makes me want to try like a port wood or something where the cask is going to have a little bit more impact. Yeah. And maybe hide some of that plastic. Well, see, notes. So with Bowmore, I like the doubles cask, the number mm -hmm. three especially. Yeah, you with know, the, the heavy sherry. With the heavy sherry. So if you can cover, if you give an overcoat, mm -hmm. this is a great, I think this would be a good overcoat. Yeah. Distillate. Yeah, this is not a right. whiskey where, like, this is, again, this is, I think, first Bill Madeira. I mean, it's it's been finished with a. A lot of flavor, and it's just not enough to overpower. This is a strong, rich, bold malt. This is not one of these whiskeys that you say you need to showcase the malt with. Not for me, no. This no. is but this is a malt that, again, if you want funky, you want weird, you want something just 
out there. Mm -hmm. This is a distiller I think is worth checking out. You know, maybe pick up their 18 year for about a hundred bucks and give it a try and see what you think, maybe before jumping into these higher end ones. This is Jim Abbott, the pitcher. But, you know, Mike and I are, well, first off, we got this for free, so. Yeah, hey, we're, we're gonna review it. Truth be told, we're generally gonna jump in at the higher end price to start with, just because I don't wanna be disappointed by a younger whiskey and then find out. There's better, that, good, better old whiskey. That I was just dumb and like, no, you, you just picked up the wrong eight one. You don't buy that well, one. I mean, look how long I didn't. I, I remember when I finally bit the bullet and trusted someone enough to buy a Glen Going twenty five. I was like, man, the Glen Going twelve really wasn't mm -hmm. that good. And the eighteen wasn't that good. And the ten was just okay. Like, you know, it's not just story that yeah. really excites me. And they're like, try the twenty five, and then I try the twenty five, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. Yeah, I, I didn't. I was not a Lafroig fan until the twenty five. Yeah. I, I owned some. I respected it, but it was just. It was never my cup of tea. But you never had the 18 either. I never had the 18. No, I had I, I had the lore, I had the 10. But that just goes back to you need the right ones. Yeah. You need the right ones. And, you know, if I had started with the 10 cast drink, I might have thought more of them. Yeah. I didn't. I went in and tried others. And I said, you know what? This is good, but it's not for me. And then I had the 25, and I went, oh. This is for me. This is my jam. Yeah, for sure. And now I like some of their younger expressions more. Yeah, you got. I mean, again, sometimes you got to go forward before and then go back instead mm -hmm. of starting out at the beginning. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Um, anyway, that's where we're at as far as a whiskey <laughs> score. We want to thank once again thank you for joining for another whiskey review. If you had this one, let us know what you think in the comment section. And Dustin, until next time, we'll be with the folks. Happy drinking. We'll see you then.